What's going on guys? My name is Tetra Ninja and this is the first of three episodes of Beginner's Week. This was a suggestion that I got from a subscriber named The Unknown Icon. He suggested that I do a beginner's guide to Modern Warfare 2, which I thought was a great idea. Mainly because a trend that I'm noticing with more of the more popular commentators on YouTube is that they're presenting gameplay but not really offering any advice or tips anymore to the community and basically talking about random things such as life or stuff like that. And the main point of these videos is to help people get better at this game and help the community out. So that's what these next three videos hope to do. I'm going to be throwing facts and information at you guys really quickly so you may have to watch these episodes a couple times over to kind of get what I'm saying and watch a little bit closer on my gameplay but we'll get right on to it. Uh, we'll start with weapon selection if you're starting off. Uh, with an assault rifle you want to choose a weapon especially if you're beginning uh, that's fairly easy to use and has good stopping power. Case in point the M4A1 carbine. It's an assault rifle that's fully automatic that has decent stopping power and the main draw to it is that like the ACR it shoots like a straight arrow and it's fairly easy to use as you can see here I'm being pretty precise uh, although it may not have the same amount of stopping power such as the SCAR or the TAR or the M16 uh, the, it's, it's unlocked right away and Red Dot Sight only takes 25 kills to unlock and I personally prefer the Red Dot Sight over the Holographic Sight even though the Holographic Sight reduces bolt spread I find that I can be more precise with the Red Dot Sight once you get the hang of using it, then you can slowly graduate to more, the more advanced assault rifles such as the M16 or the SCAR or the TAR, but like I said, it's a great assault rifle to get started. Next we'll talk about perks. The blue perk, you can either go with Sleight of Hand Pro or Scavenger Pro. Scavenger Pro mainly if, you can, if you're a little bit more proficient in stringing high end kill streaks. Uh, Sleight of Hand Pro increases your ADS by half and if you're beginning this game then that extra fraction of a second can make or break you. So I, that's what the two I prefer. Uh, the red perk, you want to go with Stopping Power Pro because every time you're using that, that uh, perk it's working for you. It gives every single bullet you fire an extra damage multiplication of 1.4 so you can't go wrong with that. Uh, yellow perk. If you notice, I use, if you watch my videos, you notice that I usually run with uh, Ninja Pro, uh, so because I have a headset and I can hear footsteps. But if you're beginning this uh, game or just starting out, I notice a lot of people when they're starting off this game, they tend to hip fire a lot, especially my friend uh, who's playing it on PC right now. Uh, even though ADSing is more beneficial to you in the long run, if you're just getting started off, you're going to be finding yourself hip firing a lot, so steady aim improve, in, increases your hip fire accuracy, so you can start off there. Eventually, you can graduate towards Ninja Pro and stay completely away from Scrambler because it's a worthless perk that basically shows the enemy where you are on the map. Next, we'll talk about kill streaks. The beauty of Modern Warfare 2 is that you can design your kill streaks to how you want to play and your skill set. If you're just starting off this game, I start. I, su I highly suggest that you keep your kill streaks low. Uh, right now, I'm running 357, and if you if you're having problems running that, I would even drop that down to 345. Three, five. Uh, UAV gives you a good idea of what's going on around you. Uh, counter UAV allows you to be a little bit more reckless in your movements, and the third one is just uh, just for fun, basically. And this sequence here segues nicely into my next tip is that you want to use your environment to your best advantage, meaning that you want to use keep your body close to walls and close to cover as, as much as possible. Uh, the, less, the less space or body that you give your enemy to shoot at, then the most likely that you're going to survive. As well, on setup wise, I suggest that you switch to the tactical layout so all your bodily movements are being controlled by your joysticks and you can quickly crouch behind cover and drop shot. I know for a fact that some people can drop shot with the default layout as well, so I'm not saying that you can't do it with ta uh, it's only that you can only do it with tactical, but I find that it was just easier to learn with the tactical layout. I also suggest that you should turn off your rumble. The rumble I find is more of a distraction and can sometimes throw off your shots. So yeah, I play with uh, with rumble turned off. As well, you want to play sensitivity wise, play to what you're comfortable with. There's no point in jacking up your sensitivity to 9 or 10 if you can't handle or you can't be accurate. So 
play within your comfort zone. Don't just because I run with a sensitivity eight doesn't mean that you have to. General tips that will help you survive a little bit longer in this game. Uh, like I said before, stay close to cover, stick close to walls so you can quickly duck behind it. And as well, if you're encountering a high traffic area such as this wall towards C, throw your equipment first to gauge the situation. If you get a hit marker with your stun nade, then proceed to throw a semtex and sometimes you'll actually hit the guy camping, camping around the corner and you'll get a quick kill. Uh, here, the, I died a couple times going towards C, so I kind of gave up and then decided just to head for B instead because I think that they, they have C held down pretty well. So we're going to go backwards and they're going to actually rush me from the upstairs, and, but that's okay. I cap it in time. Oh, just on this topic of the stun nades uh, versus the flash nades, uh, I, I suggest the stun nades just because the animation time is a, is a little bit faster with the stun nades and usually the only time you're hacking your equipment is if you're in close quarters and, or you're under some pressure and that fraction of a second can make or break you. So I suggest stun nades, that's just my general preference. In terms of what game type you, I suggest you start off with if you're just starting this game, I would highly suggest playing Domination. Just is mainly because even if you're not that proficient in killing <laughs> in killing or taking multiple enemies down at one time, there's still an objective to be played, and you can play a uh, even more substantial role just being a flag hopper, and you can kind of graduate from there to being a, a little bit more of a slayer type. And when you get more advanced, then you can um, progress into a mix of being a slayer and a capper at the same time, which is basically any team wants. You want a person that can do multiple, fill multiple roles at any particular time. If you start off with TDM and you're kind of new to this game, you're going to be really hindering your team and you're not going to be learning that quickly just by dying all the time, so that's why I suggest going with Domination. In TDM, your kill, your kill death is, can make or break your team, but like I said, in Domination is not that important and you can fulfill another role and get a general sense of maps, respawn points, and other tactics in this game, and eventually you can graduate towards uh, a TDM based game. But yeah, like I said, Domination is a great playlist to get your bearings in Call of Duty. But that segues nicely into my next point. Even in Domination, if even though there's an objective, you're, you can still hinder your team by dying a lot because you're contributing to the other team's kill streaks, <laughs> and that's not a good thing yeah, to always have an enemy chopper gunner in the air. So in that case, uh, I, I personally always run with stingers uh, because I find there's really no point of having a secondary other than a, with a sniper rifle. But yeah, if you're dying a lot and helping and help feeding the other team's enemy kill streaks, then the least you can do is shoot down enemy uh, enemy air support to kind of help out your team and compensate for, for you being new to this game. But like I said, I even do it, uh, even though I, I'm not really new to this game. I do it just because it just helps out the team as a whole. Staying on the topic of equipment, Semtex is a thousand times better than a frag nade because it'll fall exactly where you throw it. With a frag, it kind of rolls and it's unpredictable. As well, it always takes, if you throw a fresh frag, it takes a couple of seconds for, the, for it to actually blow up, and that time the, actu the enemy can actually run away. Uh, the Semtex has an explode time of only of a couple of seconds, so I hold the Semtex far and above the frag nade, even though the frag nade you can throw farther, but in most cases, you never have to throw that far, anyways. In terms of my playstyle, I find that I play a very, well not a very aggressive game, but a somewhat aggressive game, when I'm, especially when I'm playing Domination, uh, which I really like and is the main reason I play Domination. I don't, I kind of stick away from TDM because it usually just becomes a camp fest and people are just sitting in corners waiting for you. When there's a clear objective then people are constantly moving and it just makes for a more, more entertaining game play for me personally and for you guys to watch. So, but yeah, I judge, I judge my gameplay to be somewhat aggressive, but you notice that I'm not stupid with my movements. I'm not running, <laughs> I'm not running around corners with my pants, with my pants down. I'm sticking close to walls, hucking equipment if I get close to a high traffic area, and then basically scoping out the area before moving forward. I don't just run around the corner and then <laughs> and then uh, hope that I don't get shot at. If you're booking around the corner, the time it takes you to raise your gun if you see an enemy is just way too long. And against experienced players, you're dead before you even hit the ground. So yeah, 
control your movements, play aggressively, but also play cautiously at, cautiously at the same time. I know that's kind of an oxymoron, but you know what I you know what I mean. And you notice here, I've basically died three times in a row. <laughs> that's because I'm a try hard by heart in domination, even though we're winning by a lot. I like capping flags, and I like being a team player. And that's exactly what you want to do if you're playing domination. You want to be a team player. You don't want to be a kill whore. And overall, that will make you a better player in general. So I hope you like this very first episode of Beginner's Guide to Modern Warfare 2 with an Assault Rifle. Uh, next couple episodes, like I said, next episode is either going to be an SMG one or a Sniper Rifle one. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, final score in this game, I, mean, I don't remember, 43 and 45 and 13 or something like that. We win the game, which, all, which is all that matters. Uh, please rate this video, check my channel, and I will see you guys next time.